And just like that, it's time for our weekly roundup of all the things Lady just ain't going to do this week. Number one, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin white mans all over the Build Back Better bill at the last hour. Now, all right, folks. So maybe you're not hearing this here first, but you did hear from Lady on multiple episodes of this show that Democrats have a real problem on their hands in Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. And I hate to brag, but if the shoe fits, motherfucker, lace that shit up. Now, after months of negotiation and, frankly, capitulation, Senator Joe Manchin backed out on his own commitment to vote for the Build Back Better bill if the human infrastructure components were separated from the physical infrastructure components of the bill. The Progressive Caucus, led by Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, raised the alarm months ago that this was not the way to go. Decoupling those pieces was not the way to go. And it turns out she and they were not wrong. Now, the cold part here is that this motherfucker never planned to pass this legislation. I mean, we already knew where his allegiances were. And here's a hint. It wasn't with the people of West Virginia or the millions of people suffering across the country. His allegiances were with the corporate donors that put the whole ass squeeze on him. So I've said it before, and I guess let me say it again. As long as Democrats refuse to use the superpowers that we gave them, we going to keep lose, 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 losing. The Republican Party, they are concerned about power. The Democratic Party is concerned with process, procedure, and decorum. And that's absolutely fucking ridiculous in a political landscape where we're in a fight for our lives, literally. This is not the political landscape of the 1990s and even the early 2000s where the Republican Party had a coherent, although wrong, assessment of how to best govern the country. This Republican Party is batshit crazy, with very few exceptions. And so, as such, act and plan accordingly. And you could maybe apply some of that act and plan accordingly to the Democratic Party, too. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't it Maya Angelou who said, when people show you who they are, believe them? Okay, ho, well, who's showing us who they are? He is, over and over again. Quit trying to make deals with these motherfuckers while hanging out on the yacht. Let me tell you something. Treat these people like the threats they are and do what you need to do with the power you have while you got the damn power, particularly if you plan to keep that power because also the country is careening off a cliff and your decorum ain't going to do shit about that. Now, I have said this shit a million times at this point, and I just want to put it on a track so that every single time these people make the same mistake over and over again, we can just play the track instead of me having to come back and run it back. But y'all don't hear me, though. And yes, I know Joe Manchin is a Democrat, but he act like a damn Republican. So I said what the fuck I said. Other things Lady just ain't going to do this week is the Omarion variant, crip walking all over Christmas. God damn it. Well, folks, Rona's cousins are out here wreaking havoc. And the Omarion variant, yes, I said what I said, is crip walking all over Christmas. This variant is incredibly contagious and it's extremely dangerous for those who are not vaccinated. For people who are vaccinated and boosted, the symptoms and the impact of the disease is generally more mild than the previous variant, but it is much more contagious. And with the existence of more readily accessible testing, including home rapid tests, we are seeing a massive surge in cases across the country. My loves, I have had several people in my close circle test positive for Omarion, so please If you have not gotten vaccinated, please do so. Look, more than 90% of people who are on ventilators right now with the Rona are unvaccinated. That's a whole last fact. You can generally access rapid testing in pharmacies. Lots of folks have been clearing them out because of the holidays, but you can still get them. Trust me. Wash your hands with soap and water a lot, like a lot, a lot. Try and stay your ass out of indoor venues with lots of people. But if you are going to be indoors with others... Get tested, mask up, and quit fucking playing. And if you're feeling any symptoms at all, stay home. Help stop the spread and have some good fucking sense. Now, I know this is a time when we gather, and you know ain't nobody like to be in the streets more than lady do. But for real, take it down a notch, people. The Rona ain't no fucking joke, and Omarion ain't really no different. Okay? Her cousins ain't come to play with you hoes. Other things that lady does love this week, though. Number one, the guilty verdict in the Kim Potter trial. 
Now, Minnesota police officer Kim Potter was found guilty on two counts, first-degree manslaughter and second-degree manslaughter, for the murder of Dante Wright. Potter shot Wright during a traffic stop in Minneapolis, allegedly mistaking her gun for a taser. This is the second case in a year in this Midwestern city that a police officer has been convicted in the tragic murder of a civilian and happens to be in the midst of a struggle in that city around what to do about unaccountable and corrupt policing. Now, you will recall that when George Floyd was murdered by Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, the community's leaders, including the mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Frey, did a lot of talking about police reform. And bigger than that, these motherfuckers committed to defunding the city's police department. However, as soon as the cameras left and the attention began to die down, city leaders, including Mayor Jacob Frey, began backtracking on these bold proposals to reimagine public safety. Now, this summer, an amendment to defund police was soundly defeated by voters in that city. But there is no mistake that the political landscape has changed and is changing, with a mostly white jury convicting Potter on both counts. Now, what should we take from this? Number one, policing needs a major overhaul in this country. This child's life was taken during a traffic stop, a traffic stop that was predicated on the fact that her partner thought Wright hesitated too long before taking a turn, and then also predicated on the fact that he had an air freshener hanging from his rearview mirror and apparently air fresheners or anything hanging from your rear view is illegal, but like, what? And then when he was stopped, it was discovered that his tags were expired, which is an offense that the department had already decided they weren't going to enforce because it was during the fucking Rona and people weren't able to get to the DMV. So the big question here is like, why the fuck are we using police for this kind of shit anyways? Like, what was the utility of that? Second, this is an appropriate response for a crime that never should have happened in the first place. However, this is not justice. Justice looks like Black people being able to survive traffic stops. Justice looks like Dante Wright being alive to be a father to his child and a loved one to his family and friends. These trials are literally the lowest common denominator of what should be done, but a mere fraction of what must be done to ensure that we are indeed a humane and just society. So who is really one here? A now former police officer is in jail for murder. Dante Wright's family is without their loved one, a child is without their parent, and there are literally thousands more cases like this that we will never see. Congress refuses to take up police reform in any meaningful way. Minneapolis has lost its courage to do so, even though it's popular with the community there. And police continue to enact violence in our communities, and accountability is rare and fleeting. When are we going to have the courage to intervene? Other things that Lady does love this week is that winter solstice means the days are getting longer minute by minute. Now, y'all, I know I'd be in my feelings about the end of daylight savings time when the nights get longer and the days get shorter. So short, in fact, that it's dark by the late afternoon. But welcome to the winter solstice, the point where we begin to slowly transition from long nights and short days to long days and short nights. Something also feels different this time of year. I mean, not only is it Capricorn season, in the, which is the best sign in the Zodiac because we both end the year and we begin the year, so we are omnipotent, duh. But it's also the season that signals the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end. So enjoy this solstice season, my loved ones. Wrap up those decisions you gotta make, let go of those lingering issues and unfinished business, and make some plans for what's next. Other things on the list of lady loves this week is that Biden says that he now supports changing the Senate rules to get voting rights done. Okay, homie. Well, it's about time. And lady can't help but think that this announcement that was made later in the week is tied to Senator Manchin white manning all over Biden's signature legislation. But regardless, it's the right thing to do. And now I hope the president gets loud, loud in his campaign to amend the Senate rules to ensure voting rights. Now, like Lady said, this should have happened a long fucking time ago. But hey, Lady is feeling generous for Festivus. So let's just smile and say it's right on time. Now call your senator and let them know that you agree with the president that the Senate rules must be amended to give people the gift of voting rights. And if you don't know who your senator is, visit our Electoral Action Center at 
www.blackfutureslab.org. Now, finally, dear listeners, an announcement for next week. We are taking your comments for next week's episode. We are nearing the end of the year in just about a week, which means it's time for another Lady Takes Your Question show. (laughs) Next week, we're opening up the mailbox and inviting you to send us your questions that you want Lady to take up and take on. Also, in the spirit of the upcoming new year, send us your intentions and your themes for 2022. Check out the socials to find out how you can bring your questions and set your intentions with Lady. Lady is looking forward to hearing from you, my dear ones. 